Hi, I'm Alex, and in this video, I'm going to attempt to answer the question, should you buy the Remarkable 2 in 2022? So about a year ago, in early 2021, I filmed a review of the Remarkable 2. I'll leave a link to that up above me and in the description below. Most of that review is totally still valid and it is still worth watching. A few key things have changed since then and I want to cover those in this video. One of the biggest changes that's happened since is Remarkable's Connect subscription platform. It's a big change and definitely worth discussing. The competition has also moved on a little bit, so it's worth looking at what the alternatives are in 2022. And as well, the software on the Remarkable has changed in a few key ways since I filmed that review. And I'm going to cover a few of the key highlights since that video was filmed. I'm going to summarise at the end of the video with my thoughts. What is Remarkable Connect? Essentially, since the 12th of October 2021, Remarkable stripped a lot of its existing software features out of the Remarkable for new users. If you'd purchased the Remarkable 2 before this date, then you could still keep all the features with no additional cost. But after this date, you had a choice to make. Do you engage with Remarkable Connect, which can cost as much as £8 a month, or do you not and lose a lot of that functionality? Importantly, looking at the website, there is no contract with Remarkable Connect and it does lead to discounts on the product. So for almost everyone, you should sign up to Remarkable Connect, even if that means you later cancel that subscription as it will probably save you money. But it's made a very real difference to say if you want a lot of the power features, including storage, and there is a cheaper option that just focuses on storage, you have to pay a monthly fee, which is not something that any of Remarkable competitors currently make you do. And it's given a lot of people a lot of frustration. They don't like that model. We are in a world where increasing amounts of services that don't need to be subscription-led are becoming subscription-led. Now, the alternative view on that is if it gives Remarkable more money, it should help them continue to improve their software integration. I don't really have a view on whether it's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing. It's more a case of answering the question, does it still make financial sense? Is the Remarkables 2 still the right solution with regard to you and your productivity and finances once you factor in this new Connect subscription? So it's a really difficult thing for me because I think a lot of people, and the reason Remarkable have done it, are going to need to subscribe to the full Connect service. It does give you access to Dropbox, to Google Drive, to handwriting conversion, to helping you use it for presentations. And as well, although these features don't exist, Remarkable says that more software features will be coming in the future. So when you're looking at Remarkable, you very much need to factor in the subscription versus the competitors and what they do. I'll summarise my thoughts at the end of this video about whether or not it's still worth it. So if you don't want to know anything else, skip to that part of the video. But at the moment, that gives you a good idea of what Remarkable Connect's service is. So what are the alternatives in 2022 to getting the Remarkable 2? In 2021, Kobo joined the e-ink writing device party. Now Kobo have been making e-readers for an awfully long time and they're one of the market leaders after Amazon in that field, but they've never had a writing device. Now I've got the Kobo Ellipsa and I think my sort of high level overview and I've got a more detailed review of that product is it's a fantastic reading device. In fact, for me, for the size it is, it's the best large e-ink reading device there is, but it's only a decent writing device. It's perfectly passable. It is cheaper than the Remarkable 2, and all of these alternatives have no subscription. So that's something to bear in mind. But if you're looking for something to write on, possibly for hours a day, at the moment, I wouldn't choose the Kobo Ellipsa, but if you're looking for something to read on primarily and write occasionally, I think it's a fantastic alternative to the Remarkable 2. 
you've then got the books line of devices. And I say line of devices because they make so many different products. Notably, I've got the original Note Air. They've recently brought out the Note Air 2, which has improved the writing feel. The books devices are very different to the Remarkable 2. Their e-ink technology looks very similar to the Remarkable 2, but in essence, the books devices are powerful Android tablets and you can do a lot more with them. There's very different philosophies between the books line of products and the Remarkable 2. If you're looking for an e-ink device that can do an awful lot, you can browse the web, you can theoretically and practically watch YouTube videos, you can listen to audios and podcasts on it, then the books line of devices was probably the better option anyway. With the newest products, they've really focused a lot on the writing feel, and I think the books line of devices is a fantastic option for many people who want more complexity in their e-ink products. You've then got Supernote with their X series of devices. Now, I feel like although Supernote is an absolutely valid option, some people love their products, I should say that if you're looking for the next equivalent to the Remarkable 2 with no subscription, Supernote should be that company, should be that device. I do have the A5X. I've never featured it in a video in detail because for some reason I don't like the writing feel personally and I've never really got to grips with the UI. I've had the device for longer than the Remarkable 2, so it's not that I've not had it to play with, I've not had it as an option. I keep on going back to it, but it's just not a device I love. But that's my personal feelings. I know lots of people like them, and it definitely is a company, and Supernote have products, that if you're looking for a sort of almost like-for-like -like equivalent of the Remarkable 2, I think it's worth checking them out. Although I've just talked about three e-ink devices, I think it'd be remiss of me not to cover non-e-ink devices as well. Because if not having e-ink isn't a deal breaker, then going for an iPad or even a Samsung Galaxy Tab might be a much better option. They are really good writing devices, although you're normally writing on glass unless you put screen protectors on it. But they're so much more powerful. They're more vivid, they're more colorful, and for most people, if you're looking for one device that does everything, the, the iPad range of devices that support the Apple Pencil or Samsung's products really might be the best option for most people looking for products that will do everything. Finally, even though it's 2022, don't forget about a pen and paper. Most of these products are trying to make themselves as close to a pen and paper as possible. And although they do have some advantages over traditional pen and paper, for most people, actually just pulling out a pen, pencil, pad, piece of A4 paper is going to make the most sense most of the time. And when you're watching this video, just remember that all you really want to do is write things down and be able to look at them at a later date. And a pen and paper have worked for hundreds of years, thousands of years, and will continue to do so for a very long time. With regard to Remarkable software, this has improved over the course of 2021 and into 2022. A few key things that have improved are pinch to zoom is now really, really good, especially for an e-ink device. Recently, Remarkable brought in the fact that you can write and highlight in a few different colors, blue and red being the key ones. Now, the way that works is this is an e-ink device so you still see things in 50 shades of gray, if you're allowed to say that. But when you export it, as long as you write it in a different color, you can then see it in your exported notes in that new color. It's quite a handy feature, particularly if people want to mark things in red and get things to stand out that bit more. The UI interface has improved as well. Just little tweaks, little movements, things that at first I didn't think would make much difference, but there is some gestures and it's generally a bit easier to navigate around, a little bit more intuitive. The final big change is that there's Dropbox and Google Drive integration. It's not necessarily the best integration ever, but it does work and it is easy enough. For my own personal use, I do find that the remarkable apps themselves 
are good enough. And I think because I was using the Remarkable before it integrated with Google Drive and Dropbox, I've never really needed to make that transition. But I do have accounts with both those services and on occasion, I find it useful enough to use that integration on the Remarkable 2. So for me, those are some of the key software updates since I filmed my review. If any of those are of interest for me to go into more detail in, leave a note in the comments and I'll happily make a video on any of those new features and look at them in more detail. The old adage goes, never buy a product that doesn't do what you need it to do now. And for me, the Remarkable 2 is a good product today, but throughout 2021, there have been regular, really good software updates. And I would expect that to continue throughout 2022 and moving forwards. So in answer to the question, should you buy the Remarkable 2 in 2022? I'm going to say both yes and no. In terms of the no, you probably shouldn't have bought it in 2021. It was an expensive niche device then, and it's expensive niche device now. For lots of people who want the additional software functionality and features, it's now a more expensive device with a subscription that can cost 190 pounds every couple of years, which is a lot of money. But in terms of my answer being yes, if in 2021, spending a few hundred pounds on a niche writing device really was the right answer for you, if having that focus and having that increased productivity through the Remarkable 2 ended up being the right solution, then even if you need the Connect subscription, it probably, frustratingly, is still the right device in 2022. The Remarkable 2 is my go-to writing device day in, day out. I'm probably gonna write for about a thousand hours with this device in 2022. I've owned this device since 2020 and it will get thousands and thousands of hours of writing over the lifetime of the device. And if you're in a position, particularly if this is a business expense, where that will increase your productivity, then I'm gonna suggest that even as frustrating as a subscription is, this might be one of those cases where biting the bullet and getting this device is still the right answer. So I hope that's been of help. I don't know if my conclusion is controversial or not. You can leave your thoughts in the comments. If this has been helpful, then hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Tell me what else you might find interesting for me to do a video on. Until next time, I've been Alex. Thanks for watching.